Hello and welcome back to our channel. We are Aramis and Emily and for the last 11 months we've been converting our Ford Transit into our very own Haven on Wheels. In this episode we take Flossie on her first ever trip out. Join us as we explore the new forest. Yeah we've just left and um, literally everything just sounds... There's so many really noises. So Draw many noises. Sounds. The drawers keep coming undone, which we are going to be in queue for quickly now to get some catches for it. There's a squeaking sound. We don't know if that's the power station. We don't know if that's the fridge. Every bump and the bench lids go up and down. <laughs> Quite normal. But this is just like a, a dummy run, I suppose. See how she copes. Yeah. Half the kitchen is hanging out currently, so we must fix that before we go. First stop was shopping. We needed to stock up our fridge and get plenty of food. Most important bit. Nice cold fridge. Milk, milk. tea, coffee. Eggs for breakfast. Then eggs in the fridge. All controversial. Bacon. Bacon. Uh, that's supposed to be cold, isn't it? Yeah. Chocolate mousse. Essential. That can go in there. That's squash. What, uh, what the else? The easiest. Sausages. Sausages. Room. Look at that. Oh, loads of room. You could do a full week shop on that. <laughs> Wedge the water in there. Yeah. We've brought a toolbox with us as well. We'll see our power station sat in there. That's the noise I thought I could hear earlier. We also had to purchase a foot pump. Now we do have one of these. We have like God knows how many pumps. Yeah, we have quite a few of these, but when I was in Tesco having a little wee before we left, I realised that I didn't have a pump for my bed. And Aramis says you just use your foot on the mattress itself, so needed to get a pump for the bed. Nothing's organised. We're never going to find half of this stuff, but that's fine. Part of the fun. Let's bread go in there. Everything goes in a drawer. Take the trolley, put it in the drawer. <laughs> um, so yeah, we had a relatively successful shop. We'll probably realise tonight that there are things that we have forgotten missing, that we need, but we've got the essentials. We can have tea, we can have coffee. Time is ticking. <laughs> it's half past four and we haven't even left the New Forest. So we're probably not going to be in the New Forest till the evening and the whole lovely weather day has gone, but it's all part and parcel. So we're just hoping and praying that we get some relatively nice weather so that we can actually enjoy this experience to the best of our abilities. Then it was time to get fuel. We treated her to a full tank and time would tell how thirsty she'd be. And then it was time to hit the road and start the three hour journey. A few hours later, we made it to the new forest and made our way to our first park up option. We are attempting to have a look at the first park up. This was found on park for night. A few people had mentioned the bumpy road and I mean, it doesn't look that bad, but it's pretty bumpy. Um, there, But it looks like a forestry commission car park, which might mean that we can't park there. But we have got some neighbours. Should we stay here? They obviously don't like the sound of Flossie because they're all legging it. Apart from this one. This one's pretty hungry, so this one doesn't care. But we will have a little look and see what the situation is. So it's a nice, very quiet park up just off the road. But I have a horrible feeling. Only use designated campsites with possibilities. No overnight parking is allowed in the car parks and wild camping is not permitted in the new forest. God damn it! The Forestry Commission does not want you to overnight park. So, we best go check the next option. Oh, this would be perfect as well. It's literally just in the middle of nowhere, but we completely appreciate that if this was allowed, then this would be full. There's no bins or anything, and some people just can't look after their rubbish. We respected the rules and went on the hunt for another option. By this point, it was getting quite late, so we couldn't be too fussy. We made it to our second spot, a little lay-by just outside of town. It was quite level and was a suitable stop to get our heads down for the night. We found a park up. It's just a little lay-by, isn't it? Just mm. out on the outskirts of a town. For a lay-by, it's not too bad. It's nice and wide, so we're not in the way of anybody. And it's now like 20 to 10. So this really is just a quick stopover. Yeah. We don't have curtains, so this is two layers of blanket, but the light still does kind of seep through a bit. We're just gonna get the beds together and get our heads down, I think, and start the day fresh tomorrow, and maybe book a campsite. Unless we find another nice park up that we can get away with. The first one, we just couldn't. You better tell me where the screen from. Hey. <laughs> 
How the hell did a screw fall out? No idea. Oh well, there's the first thing. I've lost a screw from the slat on the ceiling. Nothing else has gone particularly wrong as of yet, but time will tell what tonight turns out like. Will we sleep? Will we not sleep? I was set up for the night. <laughs> <laughs> Please note, this is not the final look of Frosty the van. This is just, can we take it away for a weekend? Yes, we can. Is it ideal? No, it's not. Are we doing it anyway? Yes, we are. Look at that. Comfort. What more could you want? Yeah, so Crack I think tomorrow we're going to wake up early in the morning, go mm. to the nice park hub, and then we start the day. See you in the morning. The next morning came round fast and we got up early to head to another spot for breakfast. We parked at a car park by the Forest of Bortem and the Tall Trees Trail. Right. So that's going to be a nice little park up. It's surrounded with massive trees. Right in the middle of the forest and luckily we have a toilet right there. There's some benches. Oh, it's really a really nice morning. So yeah. I better put the kettle on. Time for breakfast with a view. Our first cup of tea. Nice. In the van. This morning's choice. A classic biscuit tea. You also have normal Yorkshire tea and coffee. But... For breakfast there's uh, um, the egg and bacon bath. So it is a bit of a failure like I'm checking the stuff for cooking. Don't have salt, we don't have pepper. Um, I mean, at least we have main things. We have eggs, if they're still there. Yeah, there's no eggs in the fridge. Controversial. No, and we do our bacon. How do you like your bacon? Well done. Crispy. How do you like your eggs in the morning? Fertilized. <laughs> <laughs> Dad joke, everyone knows that uh, one. Do we have the floppy floppy thing? No. <laughs> I don't. Was that bag that we said that all these bits need to go to the van? You didn't pick it up, did she? I don't know. We literally don't have anything. I've got a knife and fork. Oh my god. <laughs> I even remembered cutlery from home. So don't come at me because we've got no utensils to retrieve the eggs in. Just a disclaimer here. The van is definitely, definitely not ready. Nor are we prepared. I mean, the bedding is what it is. We slept like rubbish last night. We locked ourselves in at one point. We had no curtains, so we used blankets, but they were thin. It's all gone tits up, but we knew it would. Mm -hmm. We had a dry roof over our heads. We had some sort of makeshift bed. We've got a cup of tea on the go. If we haven't got a utensil to fish an egg out, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. Guess what else Emily <laughs> forgot? Butter? Ketchup? How do you like your breakfast bat? Dry. Well, it's gonna be bread, egg <laughs> and bacon. No sauce, no butter, nothing. <laughs> One dry bab, please. Got anything to cut it? No. <laughs> After some very dry breakfast baps, the tiredness from a slightly sleepless night started to kick in. So we decided to have a quick power nap to regain some much needed energy. After a quick nap, we are at the uh, Blackwater. I don't know, is the Blackwater the forest or the Black Forest? It's the Arboretum, so it's like the tree place. So you can walk through the tall yeah. tree trail. We're going to try to do this walk just 1.5 miles, which is going to be nice and easy. So let's go. Let's go have a look what this forest has to show us. We went for a small walk along the trail. It was early, so it was lovely and quiet when we first arrived. going well until a soggy situation happened. Wow, we live and learn. We live and learn. So before we set off, we decided to take a drink with us. I said squash because we've got the juice and everything. Baramus wanted Pepsi in his little like drawer bottle. This one to be precise. I said, is that a good idea? Because it's fizzy. It'll come out like a volcano. <laughs> It'll be fine because that's Aramis's motto for life, which is lovely most of the time. However, he started walking saying he's wet. And I said, oh, it's probably where you've crouched down and your shoe's wet. His bag 
is literally dripping because would you believe it the I, bottle I we're up to it. i don't know if i can show you inside or not we're quite dark in there but it's literally just like a puddle of pepsi in the bottom of his bag that's now dripping through so now the plonker's walking like this to stop it from dripping down his back my hands are sticky and covered in pepsi he's got a pine cone <laughs> Walk done, we couldn't walk past the ice cream van without getting one. The car park was much busier now. We were like literally one, two cars in the car park. Now it's full, people driving around in circles trying to find their parking spaces. Emily is gonna grab us some ice cream and then we need to get somewhere closer to the town, to the shop. We need to charge our power station a bit. So the sun is pretty much there, but there's a lot of trees here, so... I went for Raspberry Ripple and Aramis had Biscoff. Excellent choices before heading off to the next park up for some lunch. I was very keen to put Flossie's first destination sticker on. Our goal is to have a lot more of these. Our first destination in Flossie. Marked with a sticker. Learning from last night, we decided to search for our night's park up before it got too late to avoid ending up on the side of the road again. We then headed towards a little village called Burley. We found sort of a park up for tonight. It's a farmer's field. We found it on a park for night and um, basically it's some sort of private land next to the, what's the town name? Burley. Burley, yeah. It's the town famous for witchcraft like, and witches. I can't remember the exact history but there was a witch that lived here and there's like this really historical <laughs> story based on it. I'll look into it. So basically it's like a, a field that the deer has been released and they're just walking around. They even stay here all the night for like 15 pounds. So we'll give it a try. Apparently there's just a man coming up in the evening and taking payment and that's it. So I think we're gonna set our base camp here for now. Might go for a little wander in the town. I think we need to go open. for a walk because it's 20 to three. So we've still got time and then we can just chill here for the rest of the evening. Yeah. If you're about all things witchy, this is the place for you. It is amazing. We had a little wander and checked out some of the shops. I came across a poncho that I just had to try on, but unfortunately, it was a no from me. We couldn't walk past the sweet shop. Obviously not. The guilty one. You can't just walk past the shop <laughs> that has sweets. I'm going there, I'm going there. After a little walkabout, we went back to the van for some dinner. Is van life just scanning park for night and eating? We're just chilling at the moment, aren't we? Cup of tea, the sun is shining. The deer are literally by this tree up here, so we're hoping that they will come out and say hello to us later. We might go for a little walk, mightn't we? Maybe. Um, and I'm just about to see if I can download a film or something for this evening just in case the rain comes but yeah i love it here this break is exactly what i think we needed love it i've tried to portion it for two people oh, that well. we don't have leftovers but jesus christ my portion i hope you're hungry <laughs> so, 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 so. update we had our dinner, uh, the landowner or I don't know, the person who I think he's the landowner. approached us and we've, we've been warned that uh, we might be waking up by day or something because he's about to let them out. And it's really sweet because he come knocking and he just sort of asked us if we were staying the night, which we said yes, we paid him. He was just letting us know that the deers are going to come out 
they're noisy, they're friendly, some of them. He's given us a couple of names of them, yeah. or some of the friendly ones. We see all of them right there, and they just need to open the gate. They're gonna come. And I can scratch Denise's head. Yeah, there's apparently one very, really friendly one. Yeah, Denise the deer. So he said if you scratch her nose, she then tilts her head yeah. and lets you scratch her ears. I really want Denise. Yeah. This park up was beautiful and as the sun began to set, the farmer released the deer into the field that we were in and it was magical. I made an attempt to befriend a deer. Let's call her Deirdre. See what I did there, Deirdre. But sadly, Deirdre wasn't having any of it and made me look a right fool. And after a busy day, we spent the rest of the evening relaxing before having an early night. Monday morning soon came round and we woke up to a view we will never forget. Our neighbors just across from us enjoying their breakfast as we cooked ours. Next stop was Hatchet Pond, a childhood memory of mine that I was desperate to relive. Our first stop for today is Hatchet Pond. There's cows right by a pond, when are you ever going to get that? Yeah, let me have a little wander around here. And um, I think we have a couple more places that we can stop by. Aramis also made an attempt to feed a cow. Right. That went about as well as my deer feeding experience. We had a walk around the pond and it was gorgeous. It was so lovely to reminisce about childhood memories and enjoy the beautiful scenery. We then hit the road again and went to our very last park up of the trip. This park up happened to be very close to an animal park. So, yeah. Before we head to Wildlife Park, if we will be able to get in there, we saw the queue to the car park, like up to the road. Gonna have a lunch here and then go check some animals. I'm like a kid in a sweet shop when it comes to animals. It was so lovely. The animals were on top form, especially the otters. They had so much to say. We looped the park a few times visiting our favourite animals before heading back to the van to start our journey home. Looks like we've finished right on time. Yeah. It's just about to start raining. But we've done multiple loops around that wild park. It's like a thing that we always do. We can't just go once, so we have to yeah. go at least twice. Because you walk once, you might miss something and then you need to walk another time. It's nice for a little afternoon out, but it's not massive, so... It's nice it doesn't stop. take long, but then they don't charge you a fortune for something that's so small. Yeah, now... We need to get back in the van, get a hot drink, and get back on the road. After three hours on the road, she was back in her home, ready for the conversion to continue. Thank you for joining us on our first little trip out in Flossie. The new forest is definitely worth a visit, you won't regret it. We did find a few things that needed looking at on the van, which we will touch on on the next video. It was so lovely to take a break from converting, but now it's time to get back to the hard work and get this old girl done. See you next time as we continue our build. Bye.